I'm Mike Watt, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We are on location today, Hollywood, California, with none other than Mr. Mike Watt. How you doing, Mike? Hey, John. <laughs> it's good to see you. We did an interview. Thanks for coming aboard. Our last interview was a while ago, and I was reading that over last night. Such a great story about your... I was your... in Pedro, not Hollywood, about 30 miles from here, and now I'm face to face with you too, John. That's right. I said, well, we are in Hollywood, and, and the, the upbringing and all about Dee Boone and all the bands and Firehose and Minutemen and... and uh, and of course Iggy and the Stooges and all that stuff great interview it's on there for BassPlayersOnly.com just do a little search thing put Mike Watt and it'll come right up but that was a while ago and I know you've got a lot going on since then I would like to pick up on one thing that we talked about in the interview that I thought was very interesting and it was about the role of the bass player in the band because it, you always found the bass to be kind of relegated to a background role where you thought it should be more prominent or at least on par with the other musicians in the band with the other instruments can you talk about your feelings about that a little bit well uh, yeah there's uh, humans go through certain trendy stuff and the mindset of that time when I was put on bass by Dee Boone's mother was yeah it was like right field in Little League, uh, where you would put your retarded friend. And uh, I don't know who to blame, whose fault, but D. Boone, actually, the guitar man, he thought it was a political problem. And he said, it's easy to have po political words, but why not make your band how your belief is and put the rhythm section up there equal with the guitar? We got some ideas from the R&B people who played trebly and clipped. And uh, if you hear men and men, yeah, you hear that. So when people ask me what kind of bass player I am, I say I'm D Boone's bass player. Tell me a little more about yeah. D Boone. He seems to have Boone, had incredible. such a yeah. powerful influence on you, and I have a feeling you still think about him probably every day. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't. I'm not really a music person. I got into music to be with him, and uh, you know, he got me into like reading history, which I thought I'd never get into. But music too is like, <coughs> wow, he wants me to play in a band with him. <coughs> he wants to uh, make a place for me, but also set me up to have an adventure. Because that's what he liked about music. Uh, D. Boone was uh, not a shit hoarder. He, was, uh, he liked to share his values, you know. And if he thought it was uh, happening for him, he wanted to get you in on it. So, uh... I like this idea about music because it seemed like other people were using music to separate themselves, say they were better than other people. D. Boom was more like a, it was the hay wagon, you know, if you got something to bring on board, come on. And so uh, maybe I was really lucky to meet somebody like that. But that's was how I got into it, and those values keep me doing it, you know. Now you from burning out. Well, you're far from burning out. As a testament to that is what you've been doing, uh, not just the last few years, but even just the few last few months. I know you've been on the road. You've been touring. You've been playing. Bring us up to date on uh, what's been keeping you busy. 2015, three tours. Uh, in the spring, I had a two-month Europe tour of uh, Hyphenated Man, my third opera. Uh, then I had a. Uh, a project I never thought would play gigs, a man named uh, Sam Duke in England. You know, my f first time I saw a gig it was with T Boone. It was T Rex, and for some reason I always wanted to make a record with an England guy, even though I didn't even know about re how to make records or anything. And I finally did it, and it was by trade files. Something that Mike said was kind of bunk. It's better to play in room with people. Right. But you know what? That ain't always possible. <laughs> and I, I think collaboration via uh, something like these new days, this internet thing where you can trade files, I don't think that's all the way bunk. I don't think it's a secret and panacea to solve everything, but it's just another perspective on the experience because it can bring stuff out of you. If we're here to learn, if that's your philosophy like it is for me, we're here to learn, that can make for an interesting classroom. Not the only one. 
but this cuz uh, C-U-Z he wanted to do gigs well they start playing on the radio so we I went over there and did it on the radio uh, with him and then hey let's do gigs and then from that tour I got a call from Tav Falco hey will you play bass for me in the United States tour and this is a guy you know behind the Magnolia curtain he's a hero to me I never thought I'd get a call like that out of the blue uh, will you wear pointy shoes will you wear a suit will you play a beetle bass with flat wounds I mean all these things and yeah sure I'll try all that and uh, so interesting thing these three tours I've done this year one of them yeah three guys in the boat doing what written shit other thing a collaboration all of a sudden becomes virtual then a man who inspires you musically asks you to come on board and, and, and yeah work base on a tour and uh, trippy kind of uh, outfit so and uh, what if what have you got all good thing you know what I'm saying John I'm, I'm getting informed I'm staying in the classroom by putting myself in these situations or allowing myself into these situations because a lot of them I don't think of they come presented to me but I got to be ready for it of course but I think it's all healthy I have one one problem I think from not getting killed staying in the ring is you think you know it all you've seen everything I think that's a lame place so these kind of things have happened to me like in 2015 this is all antidote against stupid thinking like that what have you got coming up Mike yeah coming up I, I plan no tour for this spring I got four albums I gotta finish well two of them I gotta finish two I gotta do uh, one is a with Nels Klein and Bob Lee a black gang album Nels Klein is a, not an opera, but it's got, got a theme, Autumn. I just th asked him to play his most psychedelic. You know, we don't have it here, but they got the red, yellow, and orange leaves back east. You know, definitely I'm not spring, but hopefully I ain't winter. So I was thinking Autumn. I got to uh, mix that. Uh, I did a duet album with Jim O'Rourke in Tokyo. And I made the mistake of telling him that D. Boone showed me some chords on the mandolin. So he wants mandolin on it. So I've been getting to that, but... It will be done. And then I got to make a third, uh, well, actually, it's a fourth opera for me, but the libretto's from a guy named Charlie Plymel with Petra Hayden, incredible bass player, oh, uh, Charlie Hayden's daughter. daughter. Yeah. Yeah. One of the triplets. That's right. And well, the, one, the one with Jack Black? That's Tanya the cello. Okay. Then there's Rachel the bass, okay. and then there's Petra who does the violin and mandolin. And there's and a Petra's son also. They have a brother. Josh. Right. And that's how I first got to know him because I uh, produced... His treacherous Jay Walker when he was a teenager. Yeah, he brought me in in a way, and his sisters and his pop. And what an incredible music family, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. Rambling and Petra, y Yodeling Cowboy Charlie, right. Yeah. Uh, Petra, you know, first call for me if I need somebody with the perfect pitch. And uh, But to, for her to do this opera with me, it's called Pelican Man, this project. And then Bertie Wall asked to really? do recording with me. Really? Yeah, so... Incredible. I once got to do Maggot Brain with him, with uh, Jay Maskus. And uh, uh, and then he invited me to some gigs. He had me do a bass solo in Maggot Brain. I did not know what was coming. And sure, I know the changes, but I never done a solo over it. And uh, He's an incredible man. What, what, what I mean, these things are here to learn, you know? And they're, they're scary. They're pants shitters. Fear of failure, fear, fear of letting people down. But there's also the O word, the opportunity, you know? Wow. I get to go try this, do this. So those are my first four things. And then in the fall, I want to do a Europe tour with that, that band with the two Italian guys, so Sonia de Mayanayo. We did one last year of the U.S., yeah, 53 gigs, 53 days. Interview. Yeah, I think that's when we talked. Right. And uh, they're incredible cats. They're 20 years younger, but they came from avant-garde, you know, school, uh, educated uh, musics. And uh, again, I'm in the student mode, you know, literally. <laughs> uh but also collaborate with them, and they cook good. They're just beautiful guys, uh, Andrea and Stefano. What about so the Stooges? My, Anything there? I don't think there's any more Stooges. Now Brother Steve's gone. Mm -hmm. Both the Ashton brothers. Yeah. I can't see uh, Igg's last man standing of the original band, you know? And but I got to serve 125 months, which is a mind blow and a half. I've learned so much. The whole thing, all them men uh, really helped me. Help what? 
get down the road and be a better bass man. And I owe them. And shit, we wouldn't even have a punk scene without that band. I mean, that whole thing is such a trip. Uh, but my feeling is, uh, yeah, he'll do some songs. He'll do Ig gigs and he'll do some Stooges songs, but I don't think he's going to do Stooges again. Oh, that's too bad. I don't I know, but I mean, no. I mean, we we'll be lost. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank goodness we have all those recordings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And all them gigs, you know. Yeah. Like Mike, I don't know if I asked you this last time or not, yeah. but what would you be if you were not a bass player? Something outside of music. Yeah. Well, you know, I got a degree in electronics. Right. But I mean. Those were the days when you fix television. Who fixes yeah. a television now? You just get a new one, right? Well, you worked in, in a law firm, too, for a while, didn't I you? I worked for an old lawyer. Yeah, not a real paramed uh, Para- paralegal. Paralegal. <laughs> paramed. Mr. Hanley was in his 90s, walking with 2K. Uh, yeah, I did some of that work. Uh, that was incredible. But if you never met D. Boone, work. if you never met his mom, if none of that had ever happened, what do you think would have happened to you? Well, I went and got the degree, you know, from my pop and... Uh, I come from working people, so I was probably end up working a different way. I still consider this work, <laughs> a lot of work, especially to keep in the ring all these years. Uh, so I would be doing something uh, that I would hope would be beneficial for, for people. Uh, it's not like I, I'm owing anything to make a living with music, but... Uh, I do try hard at it. Um, I think Yeah, I wouldn't want to be doing something that's too much of being a dick leech, you know, John. <laughs> well, Mike, it's great <laughs> catching up with you in person and thanks so much. And we will look forward to those four projects and the yeah, uh, yeah. tours and anything else and uh Oh yeah, MikeWatt.com, right? Yeah, Mike Watt. Well, Chatting with Mike Watt in sunny Hollywood, California. About bass. I am John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com.